Good morning. Welcome to Gray Roots Made by Me Digital Experience. I'm Laura. I'm the programs coordinator here at Gray Roots Museum and Archives, and I'm so glad that you could join us today. Today is all about the puzzle ball. Uh, it was a very interesting craft. Um, we actually had one on site here in our 1850s log cabin when I first started working at Grey Roots a while ago. And I was really interested in it. And then it just kind of disappeared from my experience here at Grey Roots. But when I was thinking about ideas for crafts for this summer, I was like, oh, I wanna look into the puzzle ball. So I actually had a book at home that covered what the puzzle ball was, which was very interesting because there wasn't really the puzzle aspect to it but I was able to do some more research and figure out what the puzzle was. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we'll do a little bit of housekeeping. So today you'll just keep your camera muted and your microphone. If you have any questions though, you can just put them in the chat box. If we can't get to them during the live experience, you're welcome to email me or I'll email you if they were in the chat box. And if you're watching the recorded version of this, you're welcome to email me anytime to ask questions and get some tips. Um, after the filming, I will be sending out the link for the experience and I will also include a PDF of the pattern pieces as well. So if you want to create this another time with some different material, you are welcome to do so. And I'll talk a bit more about that as well. So before we jump right in, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the museum collection. So. The puzzle ball I originally mentioned that was in the our pioneer-esque 1850s log cabin is a part of our education collection. So our education collection are items that we either have an excess amount of in our regular artifact collection, or there are things that were specifically donated to be used to be touched by visitors or to be used by staff to be able to demonstrate something like our spinning wheels that are out in the village, or they're just something that we wanted to include. So we would have purchased it. But the one that we're going to show you is actually in our artifact collection. So our summer staff, Jacob, he is ready to talk to you about the special puzzle ball that we have in our collection here at Grey Roots and Archives. So we'll go jump over to collections. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Freilich, a summer student at Grey Roots Museum and Archives, and this is our collections room. Today, I will be talking about this puzzle ball, one of the artifacts in our collection. This puzzle ball is made up of multiple beige-colored velvet triangles, and originally had six golden pom-poms, though now only three remain. While we do not know the exact age of this puzzle ball, it is likely from the crazy quilt era of the 1800s, over 120 years ago. While puzzle balls such as this can be bought in stores, they are all commonly homemade. This puzzle ball originally belonged to the Witherspoon family of Gray County. Puzzle balls such as this hold a special place in my heart due to the fact that many of my younger cousins still use toys such as this. That's all I have to say for today, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much, Jacob. It was so interesting to see the item from our collection. And now we're going to talk about the puzzle ball here for our craft activity. So this puzzle ball, the puzzle part is that it comes apart. So it was used as an educational toy. Um, younger like babies could play with it because it was soft and they could work on fine motor skills by gripping. But then as the children got older, it could be taken apart and then put back together. So that's part of the puzzle. So we are going to talk a little bit about the sewing because it's a little, this craft took me the longest to complete. Um, this was actually my second go at it just because it didn't seem like it was working, but it actually was working. So I just needed to be a bit more confident in my skills. So in e all of your kits, you will have 12 ellipses. So those are those little parts of the circle. And then you'll also have 12 half circles or semicircles. So those all came from a larger circle and 
you will be able to see it in the PDF. But to get the puzzle piece or the yeah the puzzle ball pieces, it's just from the circle. You have your half circle, and then you have the ellipse. Ellipse, and the best thing about this activity is you can actually start with a circle of any size. So if you want to go smaller, as long as your fingers are nimble, you can go smaller, or you can even go bigger. Because this puzzle ball can be made with any materials, a lot of scrap materials that you have laying around. Um, so each of our kits is actually different. And so we want to make sure that it's just something soft, especially if it's going to be used for a baby. So when we are getting started, you're going to take your half or your semicircle, and then you're going to set an ellipse over. So you're going to meet it at a point and then at halfway down. Now I just use the fabric clips and then I'm just going to clip that. So the first sewing that we're going to do is just going to be down around this edge and that's it. I am going to do a back stitch at the start and at the end just to help keep things secure and I will do that now. And then we have this part of the stitching done. And it's just with a quarter inch inseam. And now this is the tricky part where I didn't think I was doing it right. So you're gonna kind of open it up and kind of, you're gonna meet that tip at the opposite end now. And then I'm just gonna clip it there and then I'm just gonna kind of work it to make it fit. So you're going to end up with the flat edge down there and then the top. So again, I'm just gonna do a, another start of the sewing, quarter inch inseam. So I'm always going to keep up with the trimming of my ends just to make sure that I don't have to go back and do it later. So now I have my nice little ellipse stitched out. And then you can do another line of stitching just here. Um, I'm going to pop mine out and see how that looks though, because if it looks okay, I'm just going to fill it. Yep, so that looks good. So now that I have that part done, I have my wool batting. Um, this was found from a Canadian company, but I think it was processed in overseas, but it is clean. Um, and then you just kind of figure out how much your pattern ball piece is going to need. So. I like to make mine very stuffed and then I just gonna keep putting it in until I'm happy. If I overfill it, then I just take a bit out. But the aim is to kind of pinch it in and make sure it's tucked because this is going to be hand stitched. Um, if you prefer to do it with a machine, uh, you can give it a try. I like to do it hand stitched for sure because then I can try and hide the stitches. And I'll just grab some clips to keep it closed while I get my needle set up. And this is a good time just to like make sure the stuffing fills it out because what you're going to do is kind of get a flat cone kind of shape. So now that I have this, I will Go on the hunt for my needle that was here. And maybe this was part of the reason why I took so long to sew it, because it, I would do every step all the way through with each, like all 12. So then 
I would be able to just go through and just do all my stitching at once um, instead of flipping back and forth. But part of this too is if this is going to be a project that you're going to work on over a while, you could do it one at a time because you could do things like this if you're going out for a picnic or if you're going on a road trip, you can always just take, um, do all like the machine work and then just take all of the hand stitching work and take it on the road with you. So now that I have my needle, I'm just going to try and stitch as blindly as possible or trying to hide it. So what I'm going to do is just stitch right down the center and I'm just going to go back and forth between the different sides so that I can try and hide this. Now I'm using a white thread, um, but if you want to hide it better, you can definitely use a thread color that's closer to whatever material you're working with. I know there's a lot of different colors out there. Um, and they're a lot very punchy. So it could even be something that you want to stand out. So you could get it to stand out and you could do something like a blanket stitch um, to finish the edges with a, like a nice complementary color. It's totally up to you, but I'm just going to keep stitching. And again, this is like some nice work to do outside um, or in front of the TV just nice handwork that can keep you busy. And when you get to the very end, um, you can try and hide your knot. And I did, I am gonna show you how to do a quilter's knot for the very start. I forgot to mention that one. And I will include a link to it in the email that I send out. Um, and it's just a nice, easy way to do a knot instead of having to, you know, tie an itty bitty knot. It takes a, it's much faster and that definitely helps speed up my hand stitching as well because I did it with the embroidery thread as well for the next step. So now that it's nice and closed, I'll just make sure I squish up the stuffing around and then I will just finish the stitch. But once you have all 12 of these, then it's, you know, the fun part. So when I was thinking about this one, this one is very rough. Um, when I was picking out what would go on each of the rounds, I didn't have an even number of the different material um, to do. So like I had four of like the teal zebra and then only three of the purple flowers. And then I had another odd, no, an even number for the other. So I just wanted to mix them all up. Um, so you can do, you could do like solid color blocks. Um, you can just make it be however you want because each of those kits, like I said, are unique. So you get to design it however you would like. Now, when it comes time to doing the embroidery thread, I just did it all at once. So instead of tying this off and then moving on to the next, it actually starts here. And then I just stitched all the way through. And because I wanted the colors to stand out, I just did a lot of extra loops. Um, also because I'd be using this one a lot. So just think about how secure it needs to be and then just tie it off. So again, it's just this whole string goes through so I didn't have to stop and start. And then when you are ready, you just kind of squish one in and then fix it up. And then just do one more, squish it in and fix it up. So that's the puzzle of the puzzle ball, which I'm happy that I was able to find out. Um, the actually harder instructions to make it a non-puzzle ball were much harder. So those use the safety pins that are in your kits and it was to actually join all of the 
sections up and then stitch those together instead of just doing it in the rings. So that is an option as well. Um, but I like this one because like I said, I like that it comes apart um, and you know, that it's nice and colorful and it's something that will be nice and squishy to use. Now, this one is very difficult and I definitely did a little end of craft celebration. So be patient with yourself. Sometimes it's going to be like, oh, I don't know. But if you keep trying and keep going, then I know it'll turn out wonderfully. And I do hope that you will share some of your images. And I don't know if we have any questions in our chat box. Oh, it doesn't look like we have any questions. But if you have any questions at all when it comes down to using your kits, please reach out. We are happy to help. And again, I will send out a link um, following that when it's posted on YouTube, that will include information oh, about the quilters knot and the PDF for the pattern pieces. But again, as long as you start with a circle and use those wonderful math skills, you will be able to create a pattern of any size. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. We're so happy you could be here and I really hope I can see what you create. If you have any pictures, you're welcome to email the, me them at Grey Roots, or you can always, if you post them online, just tag us at MBM Grey Roots. So made by me, Grey Roots. So thank you for joining us and have a great day.